Jane Thurgood Dove was the average suburban mum, with a loving husband and three kids, living in the town of Neredee, Victoria. On November 6, 1997, Jane had just finished the school run and was exiting the family car in her own driveway when a metallic blue Holden Commodore pulled up behind her. A short, pot-bellied man approached her. Jane began to run around her family four-wheel drive until she tripped over and the man pulled out a large caliber pistol, shooting her repeatedly in the head, killing her instantly. The assailant, together with a getaway driver, then fled the scene. The car was found torched nearby the next day and determined to have been stolen a few days prior. With no motive, several theories have been suggested for the murder including a mistaken identity or a secret lover's jealous rage. The execution style murder shocked the public and despite a reward of $100,000 for information leading to a conviction, no one has been charged in relation to this murder. Betty Shanks was a 22-year-old government employee living in Grange, a suburb in Brisbane, Queensland. During the night of the 19th of September, 1952, Betty had caught a train home from a night class she was attending. At approximately 9.32 p.m., it is thought she exited the train and began walking home with a male acquaintance, who then violently beat and choked her to death in a brutal attack. Several witnesses heard a woman scream but being a very dark night with no moon could not see anyone. Her battered and bruised lifeless body was found the next morning at 5.35 a.m. by a policeman living nearby. The criminal investigation that followed was one of the largest ever undertaken in Queensland at the time. Despite several clues including a bloody handprint at the scene and a type of boot polish all over her body from repeated kicks to her face and torso, there has been no convictions relating to the violent murder. As of 2010, a $50,000 reward is still current. The 23-year-old Sarah McDiarmid was a Scottish-Australian immigrant who disappeared from Kananook Railway Station in the Victorian capital Melbourne, Australia on the 11th of July, 1990. Although no trace of her body has ever been found, it is highly certain that she was murdered. On the night of her disappearance, Sarah had been playing tennis with some friends and after several sets, they had a few drinks and proceeded home and walked to the Richmond Railway Station and caught the 920 train to Caulfield. Upon arrival, she transferred to the 939 Frankston train. Sarah then got off at Cannonook Station at 10.20pm, walking to her car in the station car park. She has never been seen since. Investigating police found bloodstains beside her abandoned car with drag marks leading into nearby bushes. A few witnesses also reported hearing a woman shouting, give me back my keys. Despite the 21 day land, air and sea search involving more than 250 police, her body could not be located. As of 2004, a $1 million reward is still current for any evidence that would lead to a conviction. On the night of the 13th of April 1991, 13-year-old Carmen Chan was at her family home in Templestowe, Melbourne, babysitting her two younger sisters while her parents were working at their Chinese restaurant. Carmen and her sisters were confronted by a man with a knife dressed in black wearing a balaclava. Her two younger sisters were forced into a wardrobe and Carmen was taken. The only real clues left were the words, pay up Asian drug dealers more and more to come, which was spray painted on a car in the family's front yard. Police believe this was a ruse to try and distract them from the murderer's real motives. Several other kidnappings had occurred in the Melbourne area prior and police believe she would be released soon like the other cases. Nearly a year later in 1992, Carmen's remains were found in a landfill at Edgar's Creek with three large bullet holes in her skull. No suspects have ever been named and the case remains open to this day. A $1 million reward is still on offer as of 2015. The disappearance of the three Beaumont children, Jane Natar Beaumont, Ariana Kathleen and Grant Ellis Beaumont, is Australia's biggest and most well-known cold case. It was Australia Day, January 26, 1966 and the Beaumont children went to a local beach in Adelaide. 
The oldest, Jane, age nine, was responsible for the siblings, as it was commonplace for parents to let their children go out by themselves in that time. Their mother, Nancy, had told the children to be home by 2 p.m. for lunch, and when the children failed to return, their mother called the police. The children were officially declared missing the next day. Several witnesses had seen the children playing with a tall, blonde, thin-faced man in his thirties around a sprinkler. The man and the children were then seen walking together as a group away from the beach a while later. The last confirmed sighting of the three Beaumont children was by a local postman that had known them well. He said around 3pm he had stopped to talk to them as they were walking back towards their home. The children were never seen again. The case attracted widespread attention in Australia and is widely credited with causing a change in many people's lifestyles. The investigation remains open to this day with a $1 million reward offered to anyone with information that might crack the case.